Hello everybody, how are you? This is Andrea and welcome to my very first video as part of the YouTube Artist Collective. I've known and followed this group of artists for quite a while, so you can imagine what a pleasant surprise it was when I was invited to join in as a guest artist. If you don't know what the YouTube Artists Collective is, it is basically a group of YouTubers with a passion for art, who every couple of months join in together and challenge themselves by tackling a prompt which is decided by the viewers online. This time the chosen theme was Cards of All Fortunes, Fables and Fates. And as soon as I heard that, I knew straight away that I would be doing my interpretation of Queen of Hearts. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably already seen when I shared a sneak peek into my submission. I posted a quick time lapse of the sketch that I've done on my iPad Pro using Procreate. It was actually my very first time drawing something more proper on the iPad. Well, at least something that was a bit more than a 5 minute sketch or just playing around with the brushes. And I must say that I've really enjoyed the process and how smooth and easy sketching is on the iPad. I am pretty sure I will do more of my future sketching directly on the iPad. Just because, compared to my Cintiq, it seems to be much more responsive and smooth. So that is that in terms of the initial sketch. One of the rules of the collective is that the final piece must be done using traditional medium only. That is why I took my watercolor pad, grabbed a sheet of paper and began tracing my printed sketch. When I'm tracing, I really like to tape the corners, that way the paper stays put and it doesn't move when tracing. The light pad that you see me using is from Huion. I will leave all the info and links in the description box in case you're curious. Same thing goes with all of the other materials, tools, filming equipment that I'll be using and so on. For this piece I will be mostly using watercolors. That is why I need regular pencils to trace the sketch. That way the pigment does not get affected and smudged by all the water. Once the main shapes have been transferred onto the watercolor paper, I spend some more time refining the line work. You will notice me redrawing the line work multiple times for this illustration. In a way, it is one of my favorite parts of the process and one of my strengths. Even though it may not make any sense to do it the way I do it, I am simply having fun and enjoying the process using all of these beautiful materials. Once I am done with that, it is time to tape down the paper to avoid excessive warping from the water. The blue tape that you see me using is a simple masking tape that I got from my local art and craft store. You're basically looking for something that will be strong enough to hold down the paper while working, but at the same time it has to be gentle and easy to remove without tearing the paper when the piece is complete. Today I will be testing out my newest Jane Davenport watercolors. I found these at my local art store and the packaging was so unique and interesting that it immediately caught my attention and then I was just too intrigued, I had to buy a couple of sets and try them out. So to the right you can see the neutrals set and to the left is the bright set. I love everything about these small palettes, the size, 
the colors, how you get a little swatch card for your reference, and even the adorable tins. One is in gold color and the other one is in light teal or mint color. To be totally honest, at the beginning I was feeling quite conflicted about the way I was going to approach the coloring for this piece. But after ranting about my feelings on Patreon and talking to my supporters and realizing my insecurities, I decided to just relax and let myself experiment on this one and just not worry too much about the outcome. Because it's the start of the year, I've been reflecting quite a lot about how I've invested my time in 2017, what am I proud of, what I want to do differently this year, how have my priorities changed, and what are my goals for 2018. One thing that I really want to focus on is prioritizing quality over quantity. While having a set YouTube schedule was good to get a lot of content out and projects done and grow my channel, I felt that sometimes I was releasing videos that I was not that proud of and could have been so much better if only I had a few more days available to polish the video or change things over. Instead of that, I was working when I was sick and then I was having to do all-nighters to catch up, I was constantly falling behind, I was working at birthday parties, Christmas parties, New Year's parties, and even while visiting my friends. And that was also I could keep up with my schedule, which is pretty insane. As you can imagine, slowly but surely, all of this started polluting my creativity and passion. And it even affected my personal life too. I was rushing things way more often than I would like to admit. I also did not allow myself to breathe and recharge my batteries. And most importantly, this kind of schedule didn't really allow me to experiment that much and do work that did not necessarily need to be good. Make mistakes and learn from them and develop. At least not as much as I would have liked to. I basically kept on playing safe in a way because my work had to meet a certain criteria to be good enough and worthy of making a video about it. But this year I want to do things differently. I want to focus more on self-development, have a more balanced life, which basically requires time. That is why I've decided not to cage myself into a super tight schedule. I will do what feels right and that will allow me to produce content that I am truly proud of and is more meaningful to me. I am excited at the idea of growing both as a person and a professional. I am looking forward at tackling many more cool projects, trying new things, but also resting, giving myself proper quality time to learn new skills and polish my existing ones, and I am also looking forward at not needing to double my workload whenever I plan to go on holidays or worry about releasing videos when I am unwell or if there are any emergencies. I guess I am pretty much freeing myself from all of these unhealthy rules that I've been posed onto myself. At the end of the day, in the long run, they are literally doing more harm than good, I think. 
So yeah, 2018 will be a year of growth and change for me. What about you? Are you also planning to do something crazy that is super scary but that you know that will be beneficial to you? What are your goals for the rest of the year? illustration is the first step towards my new goals. I was not only experimenting with my coloring technique and as you can see with the way I had her skin tones and pinks extend past the boundaries of my outlines and not worrying so much about rendering the hair as I would normally do. On top of that I also tried repainting the line work with watercolors and a brush. And that was surprisingly really fun and relaxing to do. Plus, it ended up looking so much nicer than when I was using regular pencils. I don't know how to explain it, but being able to get a thin to thick line all in one stroke was just really really fun to do. Now that I've done this, I am super curious to try out inks for line work. I wonder if they would also be as fun to use as watercolors. One of my favorite parts of this piece is the purple line work. It makes the whole illustration so much softer and glowing. I want to try making artwork with pink line work and light blue line work too someday. Okay, it is time for the golds. Here I grabbed my fine tech palette, activated the paint with water, and I began filling out the leafy sections. Now I grab some pencils and fix a couple of smaller details. I am mostly adding some pinks on the cheeks and around the neck. Whoops, looks like I did not press record when I was adding the white details. I'm sorry about that. And now let's gently remove the tape. And this 
this is it guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you like my final piece. Thanks again to the YouTube Artists Collective for inviting me. You can find the list of all participating artists in the description box. I am sure that you will love what everyone else has done as well. Also, as per rules, this original piece will be put up for sale on my Etsy store. So if you want to have my very first original illustration that I've ever sold, I will leave the link to my store in the description box. I may try to make a print out of this one as well, but I am not sure if the golden parts will look okay or not once I scan the piece and then I reprint it again. But I will try, I can't promise anything, but I will give it a go. Anyways, it is time for me to go. Thank you so much for watching and all of your support. Take care and I will talk to you again next time. Bye!